Hey everybody, today we have a special episode of Retro Handhelds for you. We've been at CES 2023 all week, and we're hanging out with Russ from Retro Game Corps. Hello. We're going to do some wrap-ups. With me as always is Stubbs. Hello everybody. It's me, Thor. Guys, this has been crazy this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the first time we've actually met like in person. So, yeah. uh, you know, we've known each other for years at this point, but... When we, each of us walked through the door here at our little Airbnb, uh, we both, both Stubbs and I commented on how freaking tall the tallest Thor guy is. <laughs> we had no idea. This guy is, I don't know, what are you, seven something? Seven something. Eight, no, ten feet. No. No. no just just shy of six and a half. So. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. I know. I, just, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? I mean, I'm not a short guy. In Hawaii, I'm actually tall. Like, people are yeah. like, oh, look at that tall really? guy. Really? Like, I'm not tall. I'm 5'8". You know, but like... In Hawaii, that's tall, but this is like you monster. <laughs> I'm a freak. Awesome. I know. Yeah. yeah, Thor was a little bit taller than I expected, and Russ was just a little bit shorter than I expected. Whoa! Like, not Tom Cruise short, though. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you and I were the same height, that's all. Oh, okay. Yeah, it it is little. fun to see pictures that other people have taken of us together, you know, right. as we've been hanging out with right. people and yeah. going to VR parties and stuff like that, because I see them, they had to reframe the picture like this as they're taking. Yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> Like, well, to fit, well, to fit my giant be. forehead in there, just right. to fit it in. It puts us in, like, chip, chipmunk mode. Chipmunk. You know, right? Right. Hey, little guys. Just little guys out here. Oh, oh, man. We've had just a really great time this week. Now, we've, yeah, we've been pounding is... the pavement real hard. Super yes. hard. My feet are pretty sore. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. Russ, I doubt Russ. No, I'm good. I'm no, used to he's made. He's a Terminator, yeah, all right? My, my daughter said, you know, she uh, she's like, I walked 5,000 steps on my Fitbit. How much did you get, Dad? I got 15,000 <laughs> today. Yeah. She's yeah. like, what? <laughs> yeah, that was wild. So yeah. yeah, we've been walking around everywhere the last few days, covering all the different buildings for CES 2023, and we saw some really cool new technology. That's and right. This is my first time here, by the way. Yeah, mine, mine too. So. Same. So We got a ton of footage for both retro handhelds mm -hmm. and control all hype and we got some awesome b-roll and uh, some things for Russ to put together a nice video too yeah i'm gonna do a recap video when i get back and just kind of talk about all the kind of things i've seen and uh you know just some lessons learned and what i'm excited for and what i saw there's a lot of crap here but <laughs> yeah cool stuff too so. yeah there's some ridiculous moments we can't wait to share with you all. Yeah, <laughs> we we keep joking about all of the business jargon where they keep talking about how they're going to be carbon neutral by yeah, the end neutral. by the end of next century. Every, everything's tagged with the metaverse, right? Metaverse, everything's vertically, vertically integrated now. So much vertical integration. Yeah, I was just walking around and be like, "You're not going to be around in two years. Yeah, you're not going to yeah. be around in two years." <laughs> Dude, there was a there was a, a booth for just like an HDMI specification. It wasn't yeah. even a product, it right. was just a technical spec. Yeah. Right. It's like an information booth. Yeah. Well, I, I walked up to that booth. You got I, the card and I was like, what is he doing? Well, I had I just had a, a, a technical a HDMI question. HDMI 2.1A. Right. right. Mm. Cause they're talking What's about- What's so crazy about this? Well, they're, they keep talking about like 144 Hertz how TVs does, how, and stuff like who that. Who gives a shit? How does this relate to retro gaming? Oh, you're right. It doesn't. Yeah. I mean, I mean unless guys, you unless you really want to play Act Razor in 144 hertz. Well, I mean, well, it well, it, but... that's an interesting number because the Pimax Portal is 144 hertz and the Razer Edge is 144 hertz. Oh man. Two... Let, let, let's talk about the the Razer Edge. Okay. Let's talk about this. Yeah. So this is the G3X Gen 1 chip, right? Yeah. It has the Kishi V2, V2 Pro around the tablet itself. Right. Yeah. So the Pro right. is basically the V2, the Razer Kishi, but it has a headphone jack. And it has haptic feedback, so that's the only big difference. Well, and it, it seems to be uh, it seems to cradle our phones a little bit better than some of the other versions, right? Yeah. Like the little tablet they're using in there is like the specific width mm -hmm. that the controller wants. Right. So because that yeah. doesn't have that wobble that the other times you know it does it with the regular phone. Stubbs and I were over there, and they were kind enough to give us kind enough to give us a really nice interview. Yes. But they also because they had them glued in the floor models, right. they also had a loose Kishi V2 Pro they that they did. let us try out we on our like, phones. We were like, wait a minute. Yeah. That's awesome. They're like, are you going to sell this separately? Because CNN had said that you were. <laughs> they were like, we can't comment yeah, on that. Yeah, we can't comment. But then we talked to their like product manager dude. Yeah. And he was like, actually, we are going to sell it separately this year. Uh, we don't know the price yet. We don't know anything else about it other than you can buy it. And we tried it out on our Pixel 6 Pros. Totally works. Fits. So that Pixel 6 Pro has the camera bump out. Has the, has the nice big bump out. Right. And it fit fine. With the case even. With the case. Oh, no. Awesome. It was no form wiggle. fitted. And there was, here's what's funny, is that the the edge 
it has a little bit of wiggle to it, has, it. It does, just a little bit. But that Kishi with my Pixel 6 Pro, no wiggle. None. And I tested hard. <laughs> so That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it was fun. It was pretty good. Yeah. Wow, what else did we see? Uh, we had the Razer Edge, we had the Pimax Portal, which that, that was a, a crazy experience yeah. being there when we so were. So some of the other vendors who I just kind of wasn't expecting to see, so like GameSir was there, and they were in mm-hmm. right. they were in a separate building. So CES is not just like one building. Like it right. is spread throughout the Massive. strip, and we were having to take like shuttles to get to each place. And so they were over in the Venetian in one specific area that was more like a regionally based area so there was like a european section and the chinese section and so they were in there just a tiny little booth within there and there's three of them there and they had you know just their current products nothing new coming out or anything um but it was just cool to like see the game store people you know and yeah, talk to them it was. they did give us a little peek of prototype for their next model uh yes, on a phone right. they kind of showed it to us yeah it's pretty interesting and so uh that was just kind of neat to just you know, these are people I've been emailing for, you know, the past six months or whatever. And to see them in person, right. it was just kind of odd. But, uh, yeah, it was really neat. So, Well, and they were really cool with us. I had a few technical questions that they answered right away. Yeah. Um, we've, we've had some trouble with language barriers, emailing with these companies back and forth. But having a chance to actually interact with these companies in person has made a huge difference. Yeah. Right. I feel like we made headway in a lot of like good relationships absolutely yeah. on this trip just getting to know these companies and it's like oh putting a name to a face uh and just having that human element was yeah. huge so right. another interesting thing was like we brought our perspective to companies who just didn't know this stuff existed yeah. and so there was a projector company that had <laughs> randomly emailed me and said hey come look at our projectors and so we sit down with them and they were like yeah you know we got these projectors you can hook up your tv to it or you're well, not your tv obviously but like a dvd player or something right and we're like have you heard of retro gaming <laughs> right and so we talked them through it they had a projector that has an onboard android trip uh-huh. chip and it runs android 10 uh-huh. it's got a pretty good soc on it and we're like you know it has an sd card slot too or no it has a usb, USB. Port at least so you could put a flash drive on there we're like you know you could just run retro games on this projector you know you could be market like this as a console right it'd be like an nvidia shield but with the tv too you know you right. take it with you kind of stuff and he was just like Poof. yeah this like, is an all-in-one console <laughs> you bundle with a controller or two right game over yeah yeah, yeah. And so it, it's just not a segment they had thought of. You know, they had their, all these people have their big banners and stuff, and it shows all the different use cases for it, and that's not one of them on there, right? <laughs> that's a huge and use And we're case. like, you guys got to get into the banner. Well, yeah. when they hear gaming, they think you're going to plug in a PlayStation right. or a Nintendo Switch or something like right. that. They're not thinking you're going to be running a, a PlayStation emulator yeah. on it, which it's perfectly capable of doing. Yeah, I think what, it, I think it would be capable. I can't remember what it's in an S nine something or other, mm-hmm. but it's capable. I would say just based the on Arm Logic's S nine five, right? It yeah. was it was a it was higher than that, but oh, it was really? close to it. Okay. Yeah, okay. But that should be capable of just you know installing RetroArch and then running up to Dreamcast at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's. I mean, did you guys see though the karaoke machine with Android? Yes, I did. Because the karaoke machine was running Android that, seven. Right. <laughs> Right. And I think, I mean, that might have had an early Snapdragon chip in it. I don't know what's in there, but, uh, I mean, you can do karaoke. What handheld st- can you do karaoke on? We're right. standing in the South Hall, right? Because, come on. And Stubb sees the karaoke machine, and goes over and starts it. fucking with it, you know, messing with it, poking buttons. And then, what was it you yelled? Like, you, you got the mic to your face, and you go, Ladies and gentlemen, Retro Game Core is in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, I was asking him, I was like, dude, how do we actually do karaoke on this? And he's like, oh, no, 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 no internet. Hooked up. Yeah. No working, yeah. not working. And I said, thank you very much, bye-bye. And I just walked away. <laughs> Into the mic, that was fun. It was fun. Uh, A lot of these companies, though, it seems like don't realize some of the power yeah. in their devices that's being hidden right you know? yeah and they just aren't thinking about that segment and so uh even you know a couple of the companies really sat down with us and like okay talk us through your audience and what they would want to see that kind of thing and yeah. so pimax in particular we'll talk more about them later in the video but like they specifically like i i had some FaceTime with the ceo yeah. and kind of walked him through and his understanding of what a retro gamer was it needed some education and so it's kind of cool that we gave that to them it's yeah. very difficult when we're dealing with being so remote not being able to call somebody right. or, or have a FaceTime with them uh-huh. so much different 
interacting with them this way because they genuinely do give a shit. They mm -hmm. want to sell their products to as many people as humanly possible. Right. It's just that that barrier of understanding right. is it's so thick when you're just dealing with online right. or Google Translate yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or whatever it is. When you see those light bulb moments go off, for yeah. them, they're like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. Yeah. They're like, your so, card? <laughs> they're like, so you're saying if we make this small change to the D-pad, you'll love it? And we're like, yes. Vita oh yeah, the the Vita style buttons on the D pad, right. but you yeah. couldn't do For quarter circles. Yeah, I was showing yeah. them. I specifically showed them. You know, the button on their portals are. Uh, it's not made for being able to play any sort of fighting games. It's made like a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con, where you can pull it off and you can switch it like crosswise, so you can play right. it as its own controller, right? But I showed him how that means you're not going to be able to do a Hadouken or any of that kind of stuff, and it's not going to work well for platformers by going back and forth and whatnot. Yeah, and so I I'm hoping I convinced him to consider a separate module that will have a cross kind of D-pad mm -hmm. that they'll sell on their website. You know, you pay an extra 20 bucks and you can swap between them because they're just modular Bluetooth controls. Right. And so that, it's a very easy thing for them to change. Right. So we're talking about Pimax right now and the conversation you had. You were over there with the CEO, mm -hmm. correct, of right. Pimax for, for at least a while. Yeah. 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 What'd you guys talk about? Well, uh, so literally he, he just kind of trying to get his head around retro gamers like he understood vr gaming you know, the portal's supposed to kind of be both and he, i was trying to show him what we're interested in and what we're not interested mm -hmm. in you know yeah he had lots of assumptions you know he thought oh everyone's going to want to have lte in their handheld and i thought well there's going to be a segment who will want that for retro achievements you right. know but not a lot of people will and i said if anything just make it an option people can pay extra for you know what i mean yeah the Give majority me, are going to no. want the cheapest fastest processor best screen best and battery best controls life and battery yeah. life. right right and so we kind of talked through that and he just had his list of our priorities versus what weren't important and yeah. i think that really helped yeah, yeah no it was cool that you were telling him all those things mm -hmm. uh, i've been saying that to some of the other employees but the fact that you got to talk to the ceo yeah. he listened and he gets his laptop out and he's taking notes right right uh, he also showed us a little demonstration of a new product that's an accessory yeah. Right. It's like a screen. It's like a dock that's like. So basically, if you take a, the portable, you think about it like it's a Nintendo Switch. It's right. like a screen with two controllers. Pull the controllers off, and it's just the screen itself, but USB connected, all that kind of stuff, and Android based. Plug that into a Steam Deck. And it fits into the back of it. And all of a sudden, now you have a Steam Deck with a bigger screen, more battery life. 4K, and, right? And yeah, the, the thing itself is already 4K, but now it's like eight, seven and a half, maybe eight inches beautiful oled panel and then also really great ergonomic controls so at that point they're not trying to squish anything down oh, wait there's an oled in that one yeah wow it was amazing but that was the thing that they told us no pictures no right. no, pictures. no pictures no pictures but so we so can't you, show you but it's already on their marketing if you look at the kickstarter campaign yeah you so if you think about it right so you pay 2.99 for the basic portal it's got some flaws to it right it's got some compromises just to be able to appeal to everyone so it's not mm -hmm. superb in everything but it's good at almost right. everything right and yeah. then if you want to so say you buy that 299 you love the heck out of it i mean the thing's more powerful than the odin better screen resolution than the odin like there's a lot of things about it for that price point they're mm -hmm. really compelling and then later on you know let's say six months later a year later you're ready to try something else out instead of buying a new handheld for 400 or whatever it's going to be say it's 150 or whatever it's going to be for this one he didn't tell me price but say it's 150 bucks you can then upgrade the one you already right. have. The chip's perfectly capable of doing 4K PSP. Like we were playing PS2 native resolution, yeah. absolutely no problem and with Switch. the hardest games. I was playing some pretty hefty Switch games, Mario like Mario Odyssey. Good, yeah, Mario Odyssey. Full speed. Full speed when in handheld mode and in docked mode, I was getting about 55 frames, which is oh, still wow. yeah, pretty good great. for that yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's on one of the harder levels. It wasn't on like the easy levels. And you know, so the, yeah, the device problems. itself isn't too hard on the eyes either yeah. i know that they need some more refinement with the controls maybe uh, membranes or maybe some switches it, well, it just depends better right. and keep just in mind better... too that the that the demo unit was just an awful shape right oh they, yeah i think i've been beat to hell and back yes like it, they, they've been using this thing for the past three well, months on and, demos and uh that nice lady yin she apologized for the state of she the did. device yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. they <laughs> one of their uh, product managers was saying that you know we're sorry that this thing is in such bad shape for you guys uh, so they're sending some units. So right. we'll do it. We'll do a review. We'll do our full <clears throat> thoughts on this thing soon. Right. But for now, taking into consideration that the device uh, is in a bad shape, but I, I can see all the potential in there. Yeah. yeah. That Snapdragon XR2 chip runs. 
pretty freaking well. Right, well, and that's basically an 865, right? So that's can, quite I a big step. I can complain about the controls all I want, but the fact of the matter is, is that they're removable. They're completely replaceable. It's just magnetic. Right. It's fun. That's it. Yeah, and the magnet works really well, too. Yeah, it's nice. real strong. Uh, yeah. The QLED model, which is a little more spendy, uh, the screen looked great, the sharpness looked good, the, the crispness looked nice. Uh, the software was a little bit wonky. Right. I couldn't swipe from the top down to pull down oh, like, the man. brightness controls. <laughs> and I asked, I said, you know, why can't we get the brightness any higher? I said, oh, no, 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 that's a bug. You know, we're going right. to fix that in an update. And I said, well, can we get the brightness a little bit higher right now? And he goes, okay, hold on. And he updates the firmware on the spot, <laughs> yeah. on the laptop. I was like, oh, I didn't mean to put you through all that. He's yeah. like, no, 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 no. no he, I show you the best. He grabbed it and he yeah. took it away, like to update it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> firmware yeah. upgrade. Right. Yeah, right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was good. It was great. So, but that that top model has that, was it a 2.5K or 5K screen? I can't remember what he was saying. Uh, the top model still was the 4K. QLED. They're both 4K. But they, just, oh, they're, they're still 2D versus QLED. Oh, it was 2K yeah. per I was 2K what it was. 2K per I. Right? 144 hertz refresh yeah. rate. It did have an SD card slot. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Uh, SD card slot. So, I mean, this is going to be comparable to, I mean, God, Odin at least. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, beyond Odin. It's, it's beyond easily Odin the most powerful Android handheld, I think, other than the Razer Edge. Right. And the XP um, Plus, possibly. Oh, yeah, it will be. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. And so the, the biggest thing about it, too, active cooling, right? Mm -hmm. So you're able to push it further Bam. than phones with 865. Right. And then, um, yeah, so the 4K also is downscalable. So, you know, if you're playing something, you probably aren't going to need 4K in handheld mode when you're playing, you know, something mm -hmm. like Nintendo 64. Right. So you can go into the settings, change it to 1080p, 60 frames per second within the system settings. And so, you know, if you think about it, 4K is four 1080p screens. Right. right. So it's very easy for it to scale correctly and everything, and you're going to save a ton of battery life that way. And you're still going to get a really good screen. And then yeah. if you want to do 4K, like movie streaming or something like that, you have a Plex server and that kind of stuff, you can watch your movies in 4K on it as right. well. Right. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, and you're going to notice in a handheld mode, you do not need to leave it in 144 hertz. And you don't no, need that high right. refresh rate for retro gaming at all. Right. You can have, there's controls in there to drop it down to 60 hertz mm -hmm. and 1080p. Right. But for Genshin, Diablo Immortal, some more than modern life. stuff, yeah. you know, being able to, to change that. Which right? is nice. On the fly, that's yeah, going to yeah. be great. Yeah. You know. These newfangled kids these days and their fast <laughs> refresh yeah. rates, you know, mm -hmm. it's... I'm happy. I'm happy up to 90 hertz. I don't ever need more than that myself. Right. So right. the portal also converts into a virtual reality headset, though. Right? It does. Which the resolution inside of it looked clearer and sharper than a Quest Two. Mm. Uh, you would know. I would know. I'm, the, I'm, a, I'm a budding VR guy here. Yeah, for uh, sure. Budding, right? It, how many headsets? I've done my do you research, own? like three or four or five. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a moving, it's a moving target. We have some headsets on the way from some different companies now, so we're gonna check all those out on our new Control Alt Hype brand, which we'll be uh, uploading some videos to soon. But uh, it is comparable to the Quest Two. It has the same XR2 uh, Snapdragon processor in it. Uh, the resolution it appears to be clearer. I saw no screen door effect mm -hmm. at all, which is beautiful to have. I'm uh, so glad that's a thing of the past. Yeah, I was in this Grand Canyon experience, and it was just, I mean, the brightness was good. The the saturation was really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, the field of view was really nice. Not as nice as other Pimax headsets. Pimax is known for big field of views, like 200 degrees, so you're just seeing everything. They had to make some compromises to make this hybrid and work so it's down to i want to say around 105 degrees mm -hmm. right but the but their expense the, the other models are way more expensive way right? more yeah expensive. and so the, it's the still crystal they're launching it with, alongside the crystal yeah which the crystal can do oh god i want to isn't say it, it's isn't 4K. it the highest resolution yeah it's the highest one to date yeah like 4k per eye or something yeah. we're gonna look Crazy. into that more yeah but today's focus really is going to be on the handheld so uh the pimax portal I had my doubts going into it. And Russ, you were at the LA Roadshow. You weren't so impressed at first. Yeah, so a few weeks ago, they invited me to go, and I was already in LA on vacation. And so I went and saw it, and I didn't have a good experience. Like, by the time <laughs> I, I you know, waiting in line for a long time, I finally get to it, the battery was dead. Like, it was just kind of like, I'm like, okay, well, I'll just push the buttons a little bit. And again, the, these controllers are a little beat up, right? And so I'm yeah. just like, this feels like the Joy-Cons on my Switch that my kids have been beating up on for five years. Right? <laughs> All grody, yeah. Yeah, and so I didn't walk away really impressed about it. But since then, you know, really thinking about the price to performance has been really 
kind of making it more compelling to me. And I'm at that point now where I, I kind of want it to succeed. Yeah. You know, like initially I was just like, ah, oh, I don't want another handheld. I don't want another company and the jumping in and stuff. But now I'm like, you know, they are throwing a lot of resources at this they're, thing. They're trying. And, um, yeah, I just, I, I, I can't get over like the, the amount of performance we're going to get the quality of that screen there. And then there's nothing bad about the controls right like sure. yeah, I, I can always nitpick i'm very good at nitpicky if you ever watch any <laughs> of my videos but uh there's nothing wrong right no, and yeah. that's that's that goes a long way to say that that's that's a good thing so. yeah the face buttons felt like uh retroid pocket 2 right. face buttons they're very short super clicky dome yeah. switches i don't love them but they're i mean they're serviceable yeah, they work. and they're I, not well, they're not hard to push down on like the no. Retroid Pocket Two, That's true. and so I don't think they'll be fatiguing. They just yeah. really feel like Joy Cons, like yeah. they just had a switch and they're like, let's make that, you know, and so yeah. that's kind of how it turned out. Well, and I the magnetic thing really got me because I've blown out two switches because of the rails mm -hmm. taking them on and off. I've replaced the rails because you can re you can replace them and yeah. the switch itself with yeah. with aluminum CNC machine pieces, yeah. right? Still blew them out, right? You know, and think about it too, like. Let's talk about the Retroid Pocket, Odin, all these devices. What breaks on them? It's the controls, right? Yeah. Something's wrong with the joystick. Something's wrong with shoulder buttons, whatever it happens to be. Something happens like that with the portal. You let the company know, and you could just get a new controller, right? right? You don't have mm -hmm. to bring in a new device. You don't have to tear That's the nice. device apart. Yeah. You just need to put a new one on, right? Because it's a Bluetooth controller, but it has the metal connections that when you connect it to the controller itself, it's not going to be delayed, right? Like it's mm -hmm. going to be a physical connection. It's not going to be Bluetooth when you have it in, but you pull it off, it becomes Bluetooth. Right. So. Yeah. No, I think... I think this thing is going to be cooler than we thought in yeah. the end. And it has potential. Once the community, and they care. once right. the community gets their hands on this, I think they're going to do some cool stuff. Right. That's when I think it's going to be really cool. Yeah. Not only that, but consumers and other people from their booths, everyone is crazy about it. People who aren't used to these handhelds and they're all they have is a switch mm -hmm. right, or a Vita coming into this, like this is amazing. Yeah. Well, that was a huge part of our fun. You know, throughout yeah. all of this, they they look at our badges and they go retro handheld. What is you that? Know, what we, what do you mean? We're all pulling out our Miu Minis immediately, right? Yeah. Like, or the at Odin, this. or the A Y N Odin. Here yeah. you go. Like what? <laughs> and I did tell Pimax, and I'm like, I, their CEO. I handed him my Odin, my A Y N Odin. I said, this is the king of the Android market right now. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know he was the CEO when I was saying <laughs> that. <laughs> I was like, look at this, yeah. and he was like, oh. Oh, yes. So Odin, yes, yes, yes. Um, and I showed that to Razer, too. I was like, this is the best there is. Right. And, well, they're, and we did some comparisons we did live in the booth in front of all the, the Razer guys staring at us. <laughs> yeah, they're like, what? I've got the <laughs> camera out. And I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, the Odin's still the best. But you guys have a better chip. Yeah. You do have the better chip. Right. It's well, a little wide for me. but They have the more a, re refined design process, yeah. too. I mean, that, that tablet is so slim. Yeah. That tablet is beautiful yeah the bezels are a little large yeah but and they're rounded on the corners which i think is right weird. like a phone the yeah. saturation right. on that screen is gorgeous right so but you know just thinking about it right it's already a device where i have to think to myself it's got a compromise it's a 20 by 9 aspect ratio right. which means it's gonna be great for playing diablo or something like that but man unless you're playing psp or mm -hmm. game streaming you're gonna see those black bars yeah. and you are the pimax is a different story for me because it's a 16 by 9 mm -hmm. um but there's nothing where i'm thinking that that's a showstopper you know with the razor's edge i'm like man i don't know i don't like that aspect ratio right uh i think i can get over it just based on the performance and stuff right. like that um and the availability that's mm -hmm. going to be a big deal with well, the razor edge because you can be able to well you're, you're not get it quickly and waiting easily. around like right. yeah it's coming over. out yeah. this month even with the Soon. Miu Mini at its current price point, where they're releasing a hundred a yeah. day, you know, you have to yeah, right, you're not, really pray you can get your hands on yeah. it. You're going to get your hands on a Razor Edge. Yeah. yeah. So yes. I, I don't know if you guys talked to the Pimax guys, but I asked them about that too. I'm like, yeah. really? Are you going to have some available? Like, are we going to be waiting 13 months right. for it? Like When's the, the light, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, I don't know if I can say numbers, but they they were like, we got. We're going to have a lot. Okay. Good. They already have the. They already okay. have the parts for everything. Okay. Already. So it's just good. assembly at that point. And so there's no like, oh, we're missing screens or we're going to run out of screens. Like they've got enough for okay. tens of thousands. Can I say something too? I appreciated that they only had a couple of SKUs as well. Right. Yeah. You know? they, they, they and then white, white and black. They and white then, and black. Know. 
QLED and non QLED. Right. Yeah. And the non QLED has lower storage. I think it's 128 okay. gigs internal, whereas the QLED has 256. And then the, the, the device starts at uh, 299. Mm -hmm. And 399 for the QLED. 399 for QLED. That's and right. then the top end SKU is 550. No, that's because that's the one that comes with the VR stuff. Yeah, okay. The yeah, VR yeah. controllers and the headset yeah. and the, everything. So that's all separate. Like, so if you Got just it. want the handhelds, two ninety nine or three ninety nine. Yeah, or three ninety nine, right? But if you want to get the the VR stuff, you know, then you pay the extra for the for the equipment, which yeah. I prefer. Right? Yeah, because I, I don't want the, to have that honestly. So. Oh, you don't want to have it. Yeah, and so I would rather get just the, what I want. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's the two ninety nine model, right. right? Yes. Maybe the three ninety nine model just for the QLED, but. Here's what I'm going to say. As being a VR guy and being a handheld guy, uh, my opinion right now is that, yeah, get it without the VR. The VR, well, is be well it's better than the Quest 2 as far as resolution, yeah. it is very front heavy. Yeah. Even if you attach their 6,000 milliamp hour battery pack yeah. on the back for that counterweight, I still found it to be heavy and kind of uncomfortable, even though it looks nice. I'm a snob for VR. Yeah, and it doesn't meet no, my. No, this is good to hear. It doesn't it? meet my personal like threshold for something I would buy for VR. Yeah. Was it heavier than the Quest Two? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. With it's because that 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 screen is heavy. Okay. Yeah, and they need to put all the tech in that screen, and there's a bit more because it's a handheld. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just a little front heavy, and by the way, there's four thousand milliamp hours in the handheld itself. Right. And running a QLED screen at 144 hertz refresh rate on 4,000 milliamp hours. That's a couple hours. going to be a few hours. Yeah. yeah. So I would even recommend getting the non-QLED. It didn't look much different to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little bit less crispness uh, in the, and a little bit not as good saturation, of course. But it is two ninety nine, and that's a fair price to right. invest in for an awesome emulation device. Yeah. With a 4K resolution. With a 4K right. resolution. 4K <laughs> resolution. <laughs> <Right>. Upscale. <laughs> You know, PSP upscaled. 5X. So I did 5x PSP wow. on Outrun 2006, Outrun. and like you know how sometimes there'll be jitters when your car like goes and it starts right. No jitters in that part, and then even when it's transitioning from 30 to 60 frames and back and forth like it does within the, the level, no mm. stutter, like not a single oh, wow. stutter. And that's so awesome. that's great. that that says a lot. And at 5x resolution, which is very close, if not a little bit over 4K, I can't remember my numbers, but very close to that. Yeah. And so. Uh, and it looked amazing. Like the best I've seen in a high resolution in a handheld for PSP. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. And if you really want a VR headset, just buy their uh, Pimax Crystal. Focus on that because it's just right. a, it's just a headset. And this is coming out soon, but it's a standalone headset. They yeah. just haven't implemented the firmware for that yet. Well, I honestly feel like if I'm going to buy a headset, of, I'm not a VR guy. I'm, I <laughs> never really use it at all. But yeah. of all the things I saw just like as outside looking in, it was the uh, HTC one. The HTC. Right. Was That's the, what I would invest in. XR. Right. Yeah, the HTC XR Elite. Right. Uh, which converts into just a, a pair of AR glasses. Super yeah. mixed reality. Right. So you can take the whole back off and it's just like big glasses. So it's going to be like, kind of like that TCL yeah, yeah. screen, but it also does VR stuff. Right. We had a pretty interesting experience with HTC this week, though, don't you guys think? Yeah. Explain. Now, Thor, <laughs> being Thor, somehow talked us in his way into uh, a dev only party mm -hmm. yeah so we got behind the scenes at htc with just their high up engineers yep yeah so before we even talk about that let's talk about who thor is as a person because we okay. didn't know and these guys don't know <laughs> oh either. yeah so thor uh thor is a gray area man right like so <laughs> rules are like suggestions rules. right and so he's like i i think actually i'm not qualified to be like hanging out with these people but I'm just going to pretend I am. Like, we're going to do this, right? And people don't ask questions when they you have don't. somebody who's 10 feet tall walking by, right? And, and so we... and you, you were trying to talk, talk to them in the middle of their presentation. Right. Uh, or after, you talked after the presentation. But during the presentation, I kept dropping my stupid uh, card, business card holder yeah. in the middle of the big presentation. We're the clowns, like yeah. in the back, right? Kept... But of all the people, like there is... There's like I don't even know who these people are, right? They've yeah. got like they're CEOs, all like all those yeah. guys, right? 
and the person asking all the questions among yeah. all the media press that's there, whatever, New York <laughs> Times, Bloomberg, whatever, it's Thor from Retro Handles. That's right. Or gets the microphone. Hey, what is the milliamp hour battery on your <laughs> What's the capacity of the battery? I want to know. And they're like a CEO is like, right. um. It's like, we're gonna, uh, can you spell that word, please? Milliamp hour. <laughs> well, he, he immediately, like, he, he was correcting me, essentially, you know. What he, what he was saying was that their board didn't use standard power, Right. right? So they were saying, he was saying they measured it in watt hours, which is perfectly fine. That's common yeah. enough. Right. But you could tell he was expecting like a, you know, so what's your inspiration for the metaverse right. kind of question, right. you know? <laughs> yeah. Not not hard oh. tech specs on their batter. Yeah. <laughs> if I never hear the word metaverse again, it'll be too soon. <laughs> too soon. Every booth had metaverse tagged on the end. Yeah. Every booth. So please tell us all how you conned us. Yes. Like <laughs> conned them into letting us into a developer only thing. So it wasn't even a con. They offered. All right. right. They just straight offered because uh, it turned out that the guys that were standing behind us were some of their high level developers, their software engineers yeah. for the device itself. So the, the main guy that I was talking to, his name was Alex. He's writing all this stuff. All right. All of the integrations for the actual virtual reality yeah. modules he themselves sharing the source code with you right oh well that was later on at yeah. the developer party but <laughs> right. while while we were at the uh while we were at the press conference itself we were just talking i had a bunch of questions for him about sideloading apks uh, right. to make sure that we can get emulators make sure we can play n64 all that kind of stuff on it and make yeah. sure it was open right. you know right. Seeing about scope storage, which is still an issue in our community for right. things that aren't open source like Drastic, you know? <laughs> what? I'm, I'm just, I'm cracking myself thinking about the fact that, like, these are these people who have spent years, like, coming, like, they've hired companies <laughs> to figure out their purpose for this handheld, how they're going to fit in the market, right? And then we get in there and we're like, can we play Diddy Kong Racing? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> we wasted so much of their time, but it's, it's we wait, but we did it for you guys, right? right. Like we and did there was a puppy. There, there was, was a puppy. There was a puppy. Around. So so we went to the press conference as press, and we we talked to these guys, and then you know we gave them our cards and everything. Then they invited us to the developer party to right. talk about more of this stuff because uh -huh. they were low on time. They just debuted their their big bad, you know, uh -huh. their their quest and quest pro killer, which is is what it is, you know. Oh, it's. The best. They're not it's forcing tiny. eye tracking. They're you know it's yeah. it's a great headset. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. They liked that I was asking hardcore questions. Right. You know. So we got invited to, to the developer party. We went to the developer party. We showed up a half an hour early. early. Yeah. So we got to talk to like just the high right. the high ups. Well, we thought that this place that we were going to was like a club or something right. like that because it was called Vu. Right. Yeah. Like Vu. Like. like it restaurant or something. Yeah. yeah. With like a little tilde on it yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, it turns out that it's a Hollywood tier uh, light field studio. Like right. the Mandalorian screen. With the volume. Right. The, yeah. the, all the volumetric 3D crap, everything that, that yeah. you see. There's in, like, a giant T-Rex in there. Right. In with a the Jurassic, Jurassic Park Jeep. Jeep. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we, we walk in. They tell us to go upstairs. We go up there and... Uh, you know, there's just, there's like maybe 10 people in the room, 12 people in the room, because we're so early. Right, you right. Know? We had to get through three security guards to get there, right? Yeah. This is, this is Thor and Stubbs from Retro Hand. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Three security guards we're getting through, just walking through, like we're just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't even, I did I, th I had a, like a QR code mm -hmm. and stuff. Right. I thought we were like strategizing for like, all right, how are we going to do this? Yeah. And I think we came up with like, we're just gonna walk in. Yeah, just right. walk in. Just do walk we have with enough purpose. money to make bail? You know, like that's what <laughs> yeah, we're walk thinking. with well, purpose. As soon as we realized that it wasn't a club, like my my inner lunatic turned on. And was like, we're just walking in here. Like, wait, there's not gonna be a bouncer yeah. that's gonna tase me in the balls for walking in. Or, yeah, yeah. Let's just go in and see what happens. Like on the elevator, on the elevator right up, I think I gave like a kind of a nervous cough, and I'm like, oh, fucking got it. Gotta keep this together. Yeah. yeah, get it out now. All right, here we go. Yeah. You know? So so we went in, and one of the first things that we see is a little Yorkie yeah, running all over little, the room. Little, little Penny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Little Penny Lane. She's little in the, the Cat Chat channel now a little bit. That's funny. Uh, and we, we spent some time with them. And yeah. they were, I got scared to like even say that we were pressed that we were there, you know, and yeah. ask questions of anybody. Because the guy, another guy who, was, who got himself in there. Uh, uh, he was an some, actual developer, yeah. He was right. a developer. He had some fitness yeah. VR thing. He was mm -hmm. good. He's like, can I demonstrate my fitness VR in this room? And they were like, 
This is an HTC event. Well, because it was only on, he only had it on Quest 2. He hadn't converted yeah, it yeah. to, the, Quest, use or that? to the HTC. Can people see this Quest 2? He's like, they're like, get the hell out of here. Yeah, he, he, he not put, in our building. put his yeah. hand up and he goes, absolutely not. And he said it so seriously so serious. that I thought he was joking at yeah. first. Yeah. And then the more the guy kept talking, he was just like, we will have to remove you from the building. Wow. Right. If you attempt to do this, not on HTC hardware. So here we are trying to capture first-hand video and pictures of this amazing, the best headset of the year, easy, right. Right. Uh, but kind of do it on the down low mm -hmm. because we don't want to alert them that we're press. Right. We're well, there as developers. Well, but it's not even about alerting them as they, the, the, but the press thing, it was that they were so busy, you right. know? Right. Oh my gosh, you know, because yeah. they're they're again they're debuting their their new hotness, and so the developers were over there doing stuff, and so we just kind of tried to leave them alone, right? Until right. we couldn't leave them alone. Until we anymore. couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. Because Stubbs wanted to get his hands like, on the me, hardware. Let me, let me get this so thing on. bad. Let me just let me try on. it on, please. Let me try it on. What's funny is that the hardware was so good, but the experience that they had to show off was so bad, so it was, bad. It was it's just some ready, little, right? yeah. It no. was. Well, the guy said he's like, "Well, I made this demo in an hour and a half." And it shows. He he even said it shows. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and I was like, "Yeah, it shows." The experience <laughs> was you're at a like a rock concert. Yeah. And yeah, like the musicians are around you in mixed reality around the room, and that's cool and everything. Mm -hmm. But it's like, okay, where's Beat Saber? Right. You know, right. let me right. slice some blocks. To Can some... we do Chains of Olympus? Yeah, please. we do Chains of Olympus. <laughs> like what? Well, I, w I was after the software information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went over there and started pestering them a little bit. And they were perfectly happy to talk to me about all of it, you yeah. know? Yeah. I so, mean, even even to the point to where they were they were actively showing me how they were implementing their code, yeah. how, how their API worked, for uh -huh. people being able to set up the boundaries in their room and make it so the device knows this is a table, this is a couch, right. that kind of stuff. And the guy, Alex, was perfectly happy to answer every question that I had. Every little thing. Every single thing. And so was Marcus. Right. Yeah. Well, their, their, their relations developer. And that was, so that event was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we moved on from that. <laughs> to, moving, to the party. We went to the party. I'm going to step us back a night. So mm -hmm. the night before, we went to something called Showstoppers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Showstoppers is an after hours CES party uh, in a different building. And we it's got like a micro CES. Yeah, it's right. in, like an invite only thing. Mm -hmm. Thor as well talked us into getting into that. Maybe or Russ, you did. Yeah, it's a media only thing, and so you, but you had to have a certain amount of credentials, and so right. I got in. Right. And then I like just like kind of faked it and said these guys work for yeah. me. Yeah. In fact, so Thor had on his badge like <laughs> that, it, that I worked for Retro Core. Game Core. Yeah. <laughs> now I was sneaky, and when I got my invite, it's the Retro Game Core too, and I just, I swapped it to mm. to Retro mm -hmm. handhelds and then resubmitted, and they didn't yeah. say anything, but. We got in there, some guy named Scott or Todd or came Steve. over and Steve talked to us and he's like, hey, you're here, we're doing this stuff. I'm like, great. Anyways, we go into the, the showroom and they're just the most ridiculous, like it's like all the ridiculous tech from yeah. CES. Stuff that like didn't make the didn't cut make for the regular, cut yeah. regular yes. CES. Yeah. And so there were things like a robotic dog that didn't mm -hmm. quite work. Yeah. It was cute. Well, and then there was the automatic tracking night photography for like right. the celestial bodies too. Right. Oh yeah, like yeah. a full-on telescope, yeah. like that kind of thing for yeah. amateurs. So yeah. Like a telescope that would connect to your phone and do all the work for you, yeah. so you could just like enjoy it without having to learn how right. it all works. But it had all sorts of crazy technology right. in it: exposure stacking, right. all all that good stuff. Yeah. It was fantastic. And there was all... one table that was actually related to like things I have reviewed. So right. it was the Next Doc, which is like mm -hmm. a a laptop that's basically a shell and you plug something else into it and you can then use it as a laptop. So you can take your phone, kind of convert fun. it into a laptop, Steam Deck. I did a video and I'm focused mostly on the Steam Deck. Yeah. You'd be like, this is your desktop mode, basically. So right. I have a new one of those. And so they had actually invited me to come look at it. And so I went and looked and um, I'm not going to review it because it's literally just a wireless version of the one I just already mm. reviewed. Right. No changes to the hardware. Like I don't like the trackpad. Yeah, they you didn't could, change it. You and could so... add that as like a pinned comment update. Right, exactly. <laughs> There's also a wireless version. Here's yeah. the link. So I did some work there, but most yeah. of the time I just walked around laughing at like the, the it was, crazy yeah. things I saw. There was some pretty crazy there stuff. Was like, there was a micro, there, there was a microwave there that had a clear 
glass. Right. And, right. And then, yeah, their only claim to fame was that like it was easier to see you your food. See right. your food now. And right. it's like, whoa. And there were twelve hundred dollars. Uh, one of the interesting was was those guys with the genetically engineered house plants. Oh yeah, right. right. It, they yeah. said one one of our plants will be equivalent to thirty plants in your house. Right. Yeah. You water, like creating plant. oxygen, right. Right. filtering oxygen. the air. Yeah. You don't need well, air filters anymore. They even had uh, a biome. Activator mm-hmm. for the soil with yeah. genetically engineered bacteria that then it's took those toxins out of the plants and then converted them into fuel for the plant. Well, right. we also, my, I mean, my favorite part of the night was meeting B haptics. So, B haptics yeah. makes uh, tactical haptic suits for VR and also for your Steam library. So, you can go and play Counter Strike, you can play Half Life Alex, you can play Skyrim, and you're going to feel those sensations on your body. Really cool. And they had haptic gloves. Thor got to try it for the first time. I, I did. I tried to get Russ, and he's like, no, no, no. no I'm okay. a VR skeptic. <laughs> he's a skeptic. He's like, no, no, no. Yeah. And so we well, made some great relationships yeah, with them. Yeah, the rep and I, Jenny, were like immediately yeah, yeah, best Jenny friends, was all right? so much fun. you know how I am. I get a couple <laughs> yeah. drinks, and I'm... She's like you. Yeah. She was female Thor. Yeah. Female, female Korean, Korean Thor. Thor. Yes. Well, half, she, half his height. Yeah. Out <laughs> drinks you, too, by the way. Did yeah. she? Yeah. Oh, wow. I think so. Wow. She's like... Just liver. This is all yeah. Liver. Yeah, she's just liver from <laughs> top. But no, she was great, and B haptics was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, we're the, going. The to vest be... was interesting, and so were the yeah, gloves. The X forty vest, right? Forty haptic points. The gloves, twelve haptic points. It's just fun having those sensations, which is a big upgrade from our handhelds, which have like two haptic points. Yeah. yeah. So I I get the whole like you know Counter Strike. You get shot. It feels like you get shot. Not actually get shot, yeah. but. The thing that actually compelled me when I saw and I was like, oh, that's actually interesting, is you gave somebody a hug. Right. And you felt their hands I felt the hug. you on the back. Yeah. I yeah. Felt, well, yeah. what I felt was like the whole hand starting on my shoulder, putting pressure. Wrap and then, around. And then the wrap around. I felt the wrap around sensation. And I was, it creeped me out. Like, uncanny <laughs> yeah. valley. I was like, yeah, I, I was like, I was like, oh, I've never felt that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, is there a ghost in the room? That was but, the first time I was like, oh, okay, I can see it now. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really cool tech. I have an X40 at home. Uh, so I already have that, but I want to try out the gloves, gloves more. You gotta have I the gotta gloves. I gotta get the gloves. And their designer was laughing and joking about people are requesting uh, underwear versions. Underwear. <laughs> and getting I don't know why. Pants. But... I wouldn't know why. Well, I mean, I there was a device there that that so kind there of was... explains why. So that so that that device in you know I knew this was gonna come. We up. have yeah. to. We, we can't not bring this up. So. I didn't go to this booth. I didn't. I no, he didn't. Booth. Russ didn't participate. This I was talking to the plants people. By... <laughs> but, but we may have some exclusive there is a content VR. for it. Yeah, there's there's a VR device, uh, like an AI-powered... We don't have to say. It's all good. I mean, you can. It's a, it's it's an AI-powered let's machine. Call, let's call it Pleasure. what it's called. It's called the Handy. The Handy. It's, it's, called, the, it's called the Handy. Now, right? All right. <laughs> it's, a... it's called... The handy. Uh, <laughs> link in the description. Um, and it's, uh, you know, there's other products in the market, but this one integrates with VR. Right. And it uh, has haptics and all that stuff. That was, the whole thing was hilarious. And my and wife was like, the, you got to try it. You got to demo it. No. And they had like a private room to demo it. And we we're like, no. No, absolutely No, not. no. Absolutely Thank not. you. We're glad that this is there for people right. who are into that. But... Um, I was asking him questions, right? <laughs> he was straight and he faced. was he was yeah, super he straight faced, asking him questions, <laughs> and he's like holding it, showing exactly how to work it and exactly. everything. It was and, it was hilarious. And you no, know, he said he said you asked great questions. Yeah, that was a great interview. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys want review units? <laughs> he yeah. did ask us if we want. <laughs> 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 and you thought we said no, but I walked back to him, and I was, and I said, "Hey, here's Thor's address." <laughs> you you better know. not. Just, just that thing the floor shows model. up. Don't worry about anything the new. Floor model. <laughs> <laughs> he has a dishwasher. At the <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, there was. It was a lot of fun. All kinds it, of stuff. There was a bunch of wacky things there, you know. Yeah. Just in general, and it wasn't just the showstoppers. Too. No, we saw a lot of. Crazy yeah. stuff on the floor. Nothing, <laughs> nothing that like struck me as terribly impressive. Right. Everybody's talking about electric vehicles. Everybody's talking about the fucking metaverse of all things. Yeah. You know, VR is not huge. stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. So. but there were some cool things. But I didn't think that there was anything groundbreaking besides so, maybe the HTC XR Elite. So, yeah. for what is the metaverse? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> the metaverse is the VR implementation of everything that we've been trying to do to get people connected uh -huh. in video games over the last 25 uh -huh. years since we've had network gaming. So it's PlayStation Home. It's PlayStation Home. It's that's exactly <laughs> it. That, no, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. All right? You have a room that you can fucking decorate, and then your friends can come in, and you can hang out with them. Yeah. That's it. So it's Animal Crossing meets mm -hmm. PlayStation Home. Right. Yeah. 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 But at least the HTC Vive implementation of it gives you legs. Because the, right. the, <laughs> the, yeah. the Metaverse doesn't have legs. Yeah. The, the Metaverse version doesn't have legs. And well, it's funny because everyone says Metaverse. Even Pimax says they have right. a Metaverse right. handheld thing. Well, Vive has the Viveverse, too. The vibe, you know? the, no, no, it's the Viveverse. Viveverse. Oh, the I, or the vibe open ver Metaverse. Vibers. They're talking about open Metaverse, too. Open yeah. Metaverse. So, it's, so here's my thing on it. Why, uh, I just got to put this out there, right? So... Why I'm a skeptic is because I think it's still the wild, wild west. I don't think yeah. we've kind of settled yeah. on what it's going to be. And so because of that, I don't want to put any money towards something because mm -hmm. I'm like, it's like the HD DVD versus Blu-ray thing right. going on right now. It's like, right. I'm, I'm not going to buy any of these things until we to... figure out which one's going to be the one. Right. Let the dust settle. And so that's why I'm waiting on it. So. But you guys know that you can do retro gaming in VR. <laughs> you can do RetroArch... And get an emulation station front end. Yeah. Because it's an Android. A lot of these are Android devices. Right. Yeah. I'll probably try it with the portal. You know okay. what I mean? I yeah. think that's going to be my first time where I'm like, okay, let's try this out. And I have a Quest 2 at home. I'm just like, well, it's dude, not mine, but it's, e yeah. It's even with home. the Quest 2, you can connect it to your PC and run Emu VR, yeah. which is your bedroom. You can build your childhood bedroom, put all of your childhood posters up on the wall. Right. So a Morbius? I had a Morbius so, yes. poster. I really did. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so self-indulgent, though. Like, I, I hear that and I'm like, you can... you're just going to make this so much worse for all of us who are trying to chase after those endorphins we had playing that nostalgia, SNES. Chasing you nostalgia. Know? Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, if you want to build your exact bedroom, you can construct all of it. It's incredible. I tried it out pretty heavily last week oh, before we came here. Um, you know, your Donkey Kong, your Nintendo Power posters, uh, your favorite CRT. You can swap from so many different CRT brands. Really? Like you, can a, do a, you can get a Trinitron. You can get there. a Trinitron, specific wow. models in there. Wow. Um, and then you can start importing your retro systems. So mm -hmm. you load in your ROMs, you select your systems, you can choose your color of N64, you know, hook, and then you physically have to hook it up to the TV with cords with your hands. So what you're saying is that when we're 80 year old men, yes, all right, and this stuff is like maximum tier refined, yeah. we're going to be playing freaking video games together in right. our childhood bedrooms. Yes, all right. And there is, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> net play. This sounds there's, there is. There's already net play. Net play. I, I gotta say, this, this sounds so lame. No, no, no. This is where <laughs> totally we are. This Look, is where we're VR. nerds. This is some nerdy I'm not shit. Pretend this is where we are. To be like in the eighties, like I, I don't know. Burgess, I am, dude. It's so cool. Uh, no. All right, you're pl listen. It's listen, cool that listen, you can do listen, that. It's not listen. cool to do that. All right, listen. there's a difference, listen, sir. Dude, you can load in a VCR mm. and you can upload AVI files. There's a reason into we got game. rid of VCRs. Right. You can download purposely bad video files load them into the game you can add interlacing and crt filters and shit <laughs> the tv turns on has the okay you have to walk over to your game shelf pick up the box art you know pick up a three-dimensional game pull it out pop it into the system sounds like work playstation yeah, this is so much this... you have to push down the button and it goes brrr, the playstation boot up sound okay. and it's like you sit on the bed and you by the way you can map your real life objects in your room into the game so i can go sit down on my bed in real life and it'll be a vr bed in the game and just pick up my controller and play although i am going to be playing with my valve index controllers and couldn't you just like go sleep you can with your wife you instead can, right. of doing all this of this plan, <laughs> this is bluetooth so <laughs> The original controllers, so like listen, 8 bit dudes. So listen, I said. Have I lost my mind? I, I said it was a machine right now. Yeah, you sound crazy. I said, right? this sounds lame. And you go, it's not lame. Let me show you how. And then you just said, lamer stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Digging my lame hole. Oh, man. Listen, I'm literally drinking tiger blood right yeah. now. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so, so, hashtag. I think we should talk winning. about the party last night. Oh, then that and we party. met. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was going to lead Let into me, that. I'm going to grab my retro while Because. So we had we were at the HCC developer party, right? 
And then there was the HTC like media party immediately afterward, mm-hmm. which we did not stick around for at all. No, <laughs> we no. went in. I had a beer. The barcade. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. The the went the downstairs on the actual oh, oh, the down- okay, the movie right, right, floor right, right, right. with the jeep and everything Before like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's when I knew we weren't like supposed to be there because that was the we were party. supposed to have drink tickets, and we didn't because we, we did. were not well, on the list. We, we, no, I I sent the QR codes. Oh. Oh, in the chat, but we we just walked past, we blew past security, yeah. right? You know, but yeah, and so but, we never registered right. for the drink. Tickets. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> we never did. No, yeah. even that, they only gave out one. The lady and yeah. the lady who was sort of the gatekeeper was taking pictures. Yeah, and instead of asking us <laughs> our credentials, <laughs> nothing. She was like, "Make a tiger pose." No, no, I will. I oh, walked you, up. Yeah, you're she like, was, she was taking pictures, and she looked bored, and I thought. Let's do it, all right? Yeah. And I so, said, okay, boys, tiger poses. So Let's go. Tor- Thor used tiger poses to get us into the downstairs <laughs> ultra private thing. And I'm jumping on his back, taking ridiculous photos. I'm like, yes. we got we may, we got past there, so I'm being ridiculous. Dude, and she no, loved, but she loved us so much. She loved it. That on the way out, she asked us to for, take more pictures. With more her pictures. in it. She with her in it, yeah. <laughs> she wanted to be And then photo. she gave us her cards like, whenever you boys are in the, are in Las Vegas, she let me know. You like, know, what, movie directors or something? Just like, lunatics, probably? Like, I don't know. What? And it's so funny, because, yeah, it's like, we sling, we sling me you minis. Right. So yeah. you, hear, you hear all the time about these poor old ladies who get conned out of their money. <laughs> and the reason why is because of social engineering, right? Right. right. Which is like Thor is just like did. Master <laughs> class. <laughs> master class social engineering. This whole time this week. So we got in there. Yeah. Right? And then we got our, I got my drink. Yeah. And we went over to the, the massive stage. Yeah. It was so big. It was yeah. so cool. The tech was <laughs> crazy. Was yeah. yeah. Uh, we walked around, we got a video and, and even Stubbs kind of gave me the, should we, be, are we allowed to like record in here? Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I'm just going to walk onto the stage, you know, yeah. well, I'm and it's going to go up there yeah. because the Jeep from Jurassic Park is freaking right there. And I said, it doesn't matter. You know, we're leaving soon anyway. And like it was covered in water and I went up and I put my hand on the water on the, oil. On the hood, and it was freaking oil. Yeah. It's it was, movie effects. Right. Yeah. They're trying to get yeah. water spots on yeah. there. Right. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're trying to film a VR movie or something. I don't know what. Was yeah, going and on. your handprint in the oil is, is my handprint in the oil in that in, the, in that <laughs> shot. So we got we got some nice footage in, right? Yeah. And then we started looking around and we're like, "This is not our crowd," you right. know. No, like, there was a lot some, of like avant garde. Yeah, people. It was it execs too? Yeah, and like, well, but like people with like tattoos up to here and like face. Yeah, yeah and everyone's shit. like in their chairs watching us as we're just right. Sort of, they were like movie industry people, you know, and at, a lot of them were probably gaming and VR as well, but these were like movie people. Right. You know? And we finally said, you know what, let's get kicked out of here. <laughs> so we got the, we got our camera out and we started filming. Right. Uh, and doing like, here's the volume and here we are. Look at this. This is crazy. Look, there's a giant T-Rex. Right. You know, and no one's saying anything. Nobody said was, shit. They liked, some of them liked it. Like when we yeah. got to the other screen, you know, and you guys were doing your running from cars like, uh, <laughs> like yeah, people yeah. were enjoying that I think oh yeah people were actually using it yeah. a lot of people were just standing there having yeah, their drinks like oh so, do you yeah. know? so the, like, they had the, they had this big active screen right where the, the lighting had been set up so it actually looks like you're kind of in it like, well, it's like you know. the Mandalorian if you watch behind the scenes of that right. show it's the, it's the volume but this was like a single panel of that right. you know correct and so we we did a little bit green, green screens you want to do it Right, right, but this yeah, wasn't basically. the green screen. This was that big active screen, yes, you know. Yeah. So Stubbs has the mic out, and you know I'm following him, and we're we're talking and stuff, and then we're just having more fun as we're doing it. Now we're on camera, right, up yeah. on the screen. Right, you guys were definitely escalating. Right, because we esca- <laughs> the the camera guy was standing there, and he was just bored out of his skull, you <laughs> right. know. Yeah. Right. And I said, "Do you mind if we like record a thing for our YouTube channel?" He's like, "I don't, I don't uh, care, fuck, right. yeah." Like, <laughs> I rather have a beer. So yeah, exactly. So we get up there, stubs it, you know, and he's he's screwing around on camera and everything. I'm like, all right, let's do this, you know. I start to go up and, he, and you egged me on. Right, I was like, Thor, act like you're running. Yeah, in, through this tunnel. And so I'm you're running. Yeah, it looked really cool. Yeah, it did look yeah. cool, and you can see it on the screen to the side. Pretty so cool. to break it down for everyone, like like so, there's a green. You know, you see people with in front of a green screen, and they're just pretending to be there, right? 
this is the opposite where it is actually they've pre they've already filmed the background stuff so it's happening in the background and so you're in it basically instead yeah. of being in front of a green screen you're in the actual and the thing effect is so and then cool. the, the effect is yeah they, they film it and it, the kind of lighting is done the right kind of shading and so it does look like you're there and so that's basically what they were doing there and that and HTC had a new product that was showing filmmakers how they could do it for a lot cheaper than usual I guess and so that I decided to use as a fucking toy right so exactly. <laughs> yeah and and it was at that point the, the the evening peaked and we said okay let's leave yeah it's no like, no it didn't end there we went outside yeah in the oh I'm not telling that story CEO. let's just move to the next yeah, yeah let's, no we'll let's move, the move to the next one yeah so we got we got in the Uber we made it over there which that was that was a pretty long drive because we were way out in an industrial park right yeah mm -hmm. as we were leaving town to go to Vu we were like taking oh, us uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 and we met up with a uh, dollar bill. One of our patrons yep. and Kripnip. Yep, and Kripnip. Both awesome patrons. So we went to the One Up Arcade, which yep. is just it's yeah. a it's a barcade filled with arcade machines. You know? Right. Yep. That's so it. a couple lame things before we get into the cool parts. So there are there's a ton of arcade cabinets. There's probably thirty or forty of them, original cabinets, and uh, they were in various states of just like disrepair. Yeah. So like yeah. some of them the CRTs were going out. So there was a Neo Geo MBCS, right? Like so the full on four games in one kind of thing like the right red stripes you know and the crt was like this green washed out tint mm -hmm. you could barely oh, see what was yeah, going yeah. on and then just a lot of them like for example street fighter 2 champion edition which is my favorite version of street fighter was there yeah but uh left and right did not work on either of the two controllers yeah so you yeah. couldn't do anything you know and so just things like that were just really kind of lame unfortunately the... some games worked fine X-Men didn't, right? we all, we, there's a four player X-Men cabinet. There was four of us right then. We're like, let's all play let's while go. we drink yeah. or whatever. And one and, of the sticks didn't work. Yeah. Two of them actually. Oh, yeah, two yeah. Of them. So oh. like mine wouldn't go left and someone's wouldn't go right. And we're like, all right, well, we're not done. But the, the other lame one was the music was so loud that yeah. we couldn't hear right. the DDR the music. music. Yeah, yeah. That didn't work very well. Yeah. yeah. But I, let me say this is that as soon as we got in, you know, we got like a drink or whatever. And then Russ is like, all right, all right, Stubbs. Let me show you how to do some Hadoukens. Right, yeah. Um, we started out with Tekken. We did yeah. Tekken 2. Yeah. Uh, I did beat Russ in all three rounds. He did. Yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah, yeah. So he's my game. Yeah. Butt mashing a lot. But so yeah, they're, yeah. Did yeah, well, they're over there doing things. this, right? Yeah. And I'm ordering drinks for all of us. Yeah. And it's taken them a minute because they had a really weird menu. where They, like, they didn't have tequila right. at all. Yeah, they had pizza it's, and... Right, but I asked about yeah. whiskey, and they had a like a chocolate peanut butter whiskey, yeah. a Japanese whiskey, and then Jim Beam. You know, I was yeah. like, "That's your that's your whiskey menu." The Japanese whiskey was good. It was very good. It was tasty. So I'm waiting on drinks, and this guy's sitting next to me, and he's trying to play a Soul Calibur tournament or something like that. It's not happening. He goes, "Hey, you want to play?" It's like I haven't, you know, it's been a while, and I'm thinking like, you know, this guy this guy's going to be good, and he knows he's good. I, I watched him finish up a match, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I get in. We're playing two player, and I select Voldo right mm -hmm. on Soul Caliber Six Classic. So, so terrible, so creepy and guy. weird, yeah. you know. And he and he he gets you know all about it. Voldo, huh? Voldo, huh? <laughs> oh, you know, it's like, like choosing odd job or something. Right, like night. like I'm I'm just out of my mind for doing uh -huh, it, you know. Uh -huh. Trashed him five games in a row. Yeah, trashed. And I walk him. up on the fifth. Oh, one. Voldo's and, a weak character. Oh, yeah, he's terrible. Oh, yeah, okay, he's okay, awful. Okay. And so I walk in and I'm just like, it's like Natalia. Voldo, right? And he's already on his fifth game. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's already been wailing on this guy. I'm like, wow. why did you do that? And uh, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> but then I, you know, I asked Russ. I said, "Can you show me the magic of the Hadouken?" Hadouken. In Street Fighter Two. Hadouken. We went to Street Fighter Two machine. And uh, he whooped my ass, obviously. While again. while lecturing him about like while how lecturing, <laughs> so, like I was kind of not like, paying attention. This? I was like, "How do I do right. this? I need to slide from left to right, but only go halfway." Yeah. And then hit a hit an attack button. He's like, "Yeah." And I got it. I started to get it a little bit. Yeah. Um. But then I just put the game on easy mode, so it would auto Hydukin. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and with Mega Man, and I still wailed on. Right. You. And you still won. You oh, still yeah. wailed on me. So, so Russ, but that was Marvel vs. Capcom one. But, I own that cabinet, so that helps. So you're good with that. But yeah. then Dollar Bill showed up. Right. From from our Discord, and beat me at Tekken hard. <laughs> uh. So he wins. But then Cryptnip. Wailed on me. Wailed yeah, on yeah. And Dollar Bill. And yeah, so he Bill. won like 10 times in a row. Like he yeah. got oh, like God. on the leaderboard yeah. uh, on the, the cabinet itself. But it was Marvel vs. Capcom 2, yeah. which he owns and I don't. And <laughs> like he had to show me some of the moves and stuff. 
It's all good. Like he's really yeah. good at it, you know. Yeah. And he, he a, a stranger came in. He's like, I got next game. He's like, I can't put a quarter on because it's all free play. But he's yeah. like, I want to put my quarter on. Yeah. Okay. And then Kripnip nailed on him, and then it was like, okay, he moved on. <laughs> and then the night went wild when the VR people showed up. So before that, what happened? What happened? Though? What? Oh, you was... first. Oh, we met somebody. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. So so some of the VR people started trickling in. We didn't know because there were two parties we were invited to. Yeah. All right. There was this that we had to get an invite link and you know yeah. all that stuff for and then there was a vr party we didn't know it was happening that, at the same location b haptics that jen from b haptics had right. invited us to turns out it was in the same bar right in the same room that <laughs> yes yeah. that was because yeah, 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 when, when do we need to migrate to the other party yeah. we had the uber right. there yeah we just had to room. walk around the little court so, like, ah! yeah. so i'm standing there i've i have several drinks in me already you know right i've been you guys saw how i am i run around like a madman and talk to everybody social yeah. engineering yeah, yeah. social yeah. engineering that's what it <laughs> yeah, is yeah you got like what three contracts locked down while you were there <laughs> not locked down <laughs> <laughs> started but, yeah yeah anyway so i'm standing there and what it, you walked up to me right and told me who it was uh he came up to us oh really yeah he's like hey Young whippersnappers. Like, yeah, I, see the word, I see the word retro. In yeah, the yeah. Because I was talking to you yeah. about Rygar. And oh, Rygar right. was there. Yeah. I was talking to you right. about how Analog Pocket and Mr. had basically decompiled that game. Right. And yeah. And recompiled it from the board itself. And so they're able to just basically host it yeah. on GitHub. And you can just download the core. Yeah. And it's not copyright infringement because they basically recreated it, right? Yeah. And so that's how you can play the exact game on the analog pocket and it's not like you're downloading a ROM from some place, right? Like it's literally their decompiled fun. So I was talking through that and then the guy like is overhearing and smiling and stuff and then yeah, he came to talk to us. Yeah. And it was Jonathan Hurd. Jonathan Hurd. From Atari. Right. He was creator, the arcade. Yeah, yeah. And creator and lead programmer of Food, Food Fight. Fight. Yeah. So let me pull that game up. This is my Retro Pocket 3 Plus uh, and yeah, so let's see. So this dude casually is like, oh yeah, I, I programmed that entire game. Yeah. One of the original Atari games. Right. Dude also made Miss Pac-Man, helped make oh, Miss Pac-Man. On his first yeah. day at his job, right. he f fixed Miss Pac-Man's lips, was what it was. So it was yeah. his first day at his programming job, right? Right. For this game company, and they had him change Miss Pac-Man's lips and, and iconic forever, well, you know? Well, we got a full interview with, with John. Well, that was yeah. the other thing, too. I was a little starstruck, all right? I don't get starstruck, right. but this guy, gaming industry legend, on right. it, you know, he's still consulting. He's still being involved in everything. Yeah. I started asking him questions about, you know, compiling games and things like that oh, in the early 80s. His eyes were lighting and, up when yeah. you asked him. He loved it, too. Yeah. And so it got to the point where I was like, I have the microphone, and we have the recording set up. Do you want to, yeah. Would you do an interview with us? And he was just, he was overjoyed right. to do it yeah. man and we had a great interview yeah it wasn't long because it was super loud and i didn't want to start you know deluging him with tech questions and everything right. like that but he seemed really really happy and honored to be there well imagine right yeah that game came out in 1982 right 40 plus years ago yeah and to have somebody excited about it 40 plus years ago and want to talk to him about it like is anything you guys are making right now going to be interviewed about in probably 40 not. years probably, probably not, not. Yeah. like yeah I, I i don't think so either and so that's just kind of amazing right mm -hmm. that he that just as a human being that he has that kind of fulfillment that he can just walk into an arcade find somebody who knows his game mm -hmm. and who knows to ask the right questions that just kind of light him up that's pretty awesome that was awesome so, it was really heartwarming and it's it was really cool because palmer lucky was there right the founder of oculus was just hanging out and so you know, we brought Jonathan into the VR VIP area. Mm -hmm. They're like, you got to see, you know, what you started in gaming evolved into. Yeah. Right. And it's evolved into all this. And he was just like, what? People want it, want me over there? I'm like, yeah. And, and yeah, they absolutely. were calling him over. They're like, Jonathan, bring him over, bring him over. And it was it was awesome. Yeah. meet Palmer, too. Well, and we got a picture of us with the both of them. With the both right? of those yeah. guys. With you, the past and the present. Which is nuts you know, with, Yeah, that's, that's crazy. It's like, we, we started our VR. We haven't even uploaded a single video of vr to our right. control all hype channel right. uh and we're already like meeting freaking palmer lucky yeah. from oculus getting to ask him questions we're he, we're he, in the htc developer conference developer conference you know? and it's like what new content creators for their a brand new subject is already getting all this access it, it's just it was some sort of like fateful event yeah i'm really grateful but 
Palmer is like, you know, I'm screw VR. I'm done with VR. I quit. Mm-hmm. I'm done with that shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to make retro handheld now. Yeah. And it's going to compete <laughs> yes, with the analog pocket. Yeah. He's like, I want to build the ultimate Game Boy Color. But I believe he said it's also going to emulate up to N64. N64, yeah. The, so but he was looking, FPGA. talking about original Yeah, it's hardware. it's not emulation right. it's so much. Well, it's not even F- FPGA. No. Oh, it's not. It's OG chips. And what he said was that he's going to make perfect. he's going to make the greatest Game Boy Color Ever. of all time. Uh, yeah. okay. You know, yeah. where'd the N sixty four come in? Because he bought a bunch. He like he was he, going to Japan because they're super cheap over there. Okay. Yeah. So he just bought hundreds of them, right? Okay. And because so, I think his plan is to make sixty four of these handhelds, right? right? And they're just going to use the chipboard from there. So yeah. He's recreating a new PCB. Oh, that uses the he's same pulling. Chip. He's put. I think he's harvesting the chips off the old boards and right. then putting them on a new PCB right. for a handheld just for N sixty four. So he said. He said, "Talk to me in six months." Right. Yeah. So, and so he was, he was that open was, to a podcast interview. Right, and that was one of three contracts that we talked about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, like some Indian VR company and some other. There were a couple other things. Yeah. Local. Yeah. It may be more than three. I don't know. Who let's, knows? Let's find out. Who knows? But it, it was, was a long night. It was a long night. What else happened that night? Uh, a lot we of met, Dance Dance Revolution. We, we met a, a ton of VR content creators. A thrill across, Seeker? Yeah. Uh, what's it, what was their name? Uh, Tediana VR? Disco Tetiana VR? VR. Yeah. Uh, a few other people, but. Man, there were there were millions and millions of TikTok views in that room. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. There were there were so many content creators yeah. and so many just fun people the that wanted to Whip hang out and talk. Yeah, there, the Pistol Whip creator which is was my there. VR game. She was a sweetheart. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was it was a great time just in general. The, the RPG VR guys. Oh yeah. Oh Those yeah. Guys were awesome. Yeah. So these guys made, made like an Earthbound like game. Yeah, they made yeah. it a VR RPG inspired by classic jrpgs so right. you're in you're in first person in a in a weight in a turn-based battle uh-huh. right and then when it's your turn you punch you and wail, stab right. and cast magic or or you have to dodge when you're getting right. attacked all right yeah. block yeah it, yeah it, so yeah the way they explain the overworld is third person so kind of like top down final fantasy old dragon warrior mm-hmm. and then first person during the battle so a lot like actually dragon warrior this yeah. first person as well so. Yeah. We we actually met those guys first yeah. at the developer conference, That's and then right. they showed up at the well, yeah, the VR party later right. on too. Uh, yeah. The other cool thing there was there was more tech being shown off. So there was a three dimensional tablet that had like 3ds yep. functionality when you looked at the tablet, like yeah. Snapdragon 888 processor, 888 tablet. Imagine the gaming options with the 3ds emulator. I see. I I think that's really cool. Yeah. It doesn't do anything for me. Personally. It sounds like an instant headache. Yeah, I, yeah. But they it like sounds a, a fun. A crowd and of people who were just a whoa. The, and the tablet was super sleek, super nice. thin. It was beautiful, but yeah. 3D screen is no. like two 2014 for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So no, I get it. And there was a uh, guy. I'm not haptics. hating though. I, that, my mind can be changed, but right. not for me. I don't think. It was like a haptics gun guy who was really excited. Oh yeah. And he freaked me out because he comes up and he's like. All right, I'm gonna shoot the place up. Like, whoa, fuck, yeah, what's he, happening? He what's just straight happening? pointed this thing at yeah. us and pulls no the trigger, as and it goes. Fuck. Um, and it's like, oh, okay, you're just joshing around. Yeah. Um, so but that, that, was that, that was a very weird way. That was a weird way to to, yeah, to do that to introduction. Do that. It was very strange. Yeah. So we had that a B haptic. The B haptic showed up. Playing sixty four with them. Yeah. Dance dance revolution. Uh, oh, oh, guys showed up. Or oh, team showed up. Haptic shirt. Mm-hmm. The three D printing or not three D three D mapping guys were there. That was, that was cool. So they had this huge contraption <laughs> on their shoulders and above their head, and it would look like they're in the traction. Room. Yeah, and it would map the room for they... you, so you could like have your three three D VR space. I don't know. All that right. Stuff it looked like someone who had like a broken neck with right. the correct yeah. Yeah. device. Yeah. Like like Halo. Or something. Yeah. yeah. So it was it was a long night. We we left there, got some good food. Thanks, Dollar Bill, for driving us. Thanks, buddy. Um, it was cool seeing some of our Discord people in person. Just look at this. We're three dimensional well, people. I thought maybe you were both figments of my imagination until yeah, this possible. week. You yeah. know, it turns out the Cryptnip is going to be taking on something in RH yeah. too. Cryptnip's going to take over our RH Music Jam yep. uh, from Chush this year. We've taken a little break, and so Cryptnip's going to be running quarter one, two, three, and four this year for the Music Jam. More to come on that. He works for Roland, so he had a booth at CES as well. Right. I got to try some awesome V drums. They're coming out with this thing called the Bridgecast. Right. Right, which is going to, it's like an Elgato device. Yeah, so it's like you can, you can basically ultra, ultra control advanced, your ultra environment as you're like using 
uh, you know, streaming and stuff like that. So you want to turn down the game music versus your mic and stuff like that, but like super sharp and really well made and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, they're a Japanese company, and so it's just a lot of quality there. And so right. I'm actually very interested. I'm, I'm thinking about starting doing streaming uh, to basically stream my testing instead of having to show it in the videos. I'll have the stream, and I'll be like, okay, let's spend two hours. I'm going to show you how I do all my configurations and setup and mm-hmm. stuff. And because I think that would be interesting for people and stuff. And so I, I'm hoping to get yeah. my hands on one of those cast machines just to kind of help with that process. Right. Yeah. And here's what, what else is cool is that Roland, uh, they're the ones who made our V-Moda headsets, our monogrammed ones we're yep. showing off in the podcast. Uh, they're going to take that to the next level, and we're going to have a sponsored Roland. Uh, Roland is going to sponsor the RH Music Jam. They're potentially. Potentially. Right. You know, he has talked to his boss, all that, but he seemed <laughs> to open to it, what have you. But he's talking about the winner making the music jam do a competition and the winner would get a personalized monogrammed uh, V-Moda headset with their Discord username on and an RH logo, an RGC logo. Uh, and that would be really cool. Turning it into a competition changes the vibe a bit. Yeah. yeah. But only one can win. Yeah. And so that would be fun. The other thing, I don't know if you guys meant, noticed it, but I, I noticed it, is that those headphones are specifically integrated with the BridgeCast. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Like, so they're made specifically, like they're supposed to have some sort of special integration. Wow. So that's pretty awesome. Too. Yeah. I did not notice that. Yeah, I was great. I couldn't hear over the fact that the drums were so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> they're, oh, yeah, they're, you kept leaving us to go play yeah. leaving throughout the show uh, multiple days to just play the drums. Well, we... we... The Roland booth was, I was like, positioned in a certain way that we kind of had to walk by it several times. Yeah. I played so much, I cut my, my wrist yeah. open with the drumsticks. And this guy has the ability to just teleport. Oh, yeah. All right. Should we talk about our top 10 fail moments of CES? Top 10. I don't forget 10, but. Yeah, oh, you have 10. Yeah. Top 10 well, fail moments. Well, I would disappear moments. at random. Right. And you guys would be like, oh, shit, where'd stubs go? Yeah. I didn't yeah. know I was doing that either. I just like, oh, that looks really cool. And then you guys are gone. My, my favorite one was this la- the basically the last one where we were walking down just the biggest hallway of all time uh-huh right and i'd already said okay we just have to go down here to the end okay yes. that's where <laughs> roland is all right don't and, move and don't go anywhere you're walking in front of us and you're you're in mission you know yeah. you're going and then you saw a vr headset and we're just gone you know <laughs> that's it and i thought yeah he knows where we're going you know no. and then we went past the LG booth, everything like that, and then I get a phone call. Well, hey, where are you? We're what? We're at the Roland booth. I'm like, I'm at Quiznos. <laughs> I'm at Quiznos. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> it was fun, you know. Somebody yeah. asked me how it's going. I said, well, we're just trying to make sure stuff doesn't warm up, warm, With, wander off. Yeah, yeah that's now, hold, it. Now, now, I'm gonna on. I'm gonna low jack you next time, dude. Okay, like I'm gonna know exactly where you are. I'm gonna put one of those air, my air tags my in your shoe or something. You, you know, know those like leashes that moms put on their yeah, kids? The, yeah, the, <laughs> the full chest ones though, right. all right? <laughs> yeah. That's fair. You know what? And and that's, that's fine. But you know what? Let's talk about what you what fail you did, Thor. What did uh, I do? What did you do? You had us walk like a mile, two oh, miles. Oh to my this, gosh. To, to like you know like the land before time where they try to get to the Green Valley? It's like the promised yeah, land is this, the great is this I felt so the bad about valley. that. The oh, me- my God. There's, so there's this media room on the other side of the building that had supposedly a free lunch. Because we were very Which, hungry. When you say very other hungry. side of the building, all right? We're talking like three you're, buildings. It's like other side of like, like seven three. buildings. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like buildings. four or five city blocks. I yeah. yeah. Like 15,000 steps. Right. And it was a journey. Right. A journey. So these guys said they were said they were hungry. And the organization that runs CES yeah. is kind enough to have a... a chill media room with lunches and and drinks yeah, and all that great. and tables and internet and all that stuff right yeah. yeah super cool so we were like let's go get some lunch yeah you know we got there five minutes after lunch was pulled uh-huh. after hiking all the way through the convention center i mean all the way through and having to stop and ask for directions and stuff because there yeah. were thousands of people right and only the only people who knew where anything was are the, the actual convention workers with right. the, at the information signs. Yeah. So we so, got there. Okay, so we get <laughs> uh, this is this is the fail. All right, we get there, the tables are empty. I mean, gone. Yeah. Except for some cold cookies and warm water. <laughs> right, and and Russ is gluten free. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can't do the cookies. Can't do the cookies. Yeah. But there, there was water mm-hmm. and coffee, 
and some random bags of Lay's potato chips that I said I could have I could have stolen for you. I ate like okay. four cookies, and Thor had at least four or five cookies too. I, I think yeah, I think I had like, three. We cookies. were so hungry, yeah, and, and we just were like, we need blood sugar. We just had had to have some. We're just eating for I'm like I'm looking at Russ. I'm like, yeah, hey, we're. I'm so sorry. We're both eating but cookies, I'm keep, like feeling bad for I'm, Russ. I'm so sorry, I'm but not eating. bad enough was, to stop my eating cookies. Mint herbal tea, right? Yeah, yeah, the only thing they had was hot water. I was like, I'll go get you those chips from their table. I don't think they're eating them. He's like, it's fine. I don't. I don't need it. Yeah. You know. So so we went through all that and we're like, okay, no, we need to go find something. And <laughs> Thor kept saying, he's like, I felt so bad. Dude, I, I, felt I, so I, bad. I know you guys are like, oh, it's okay because it's he funny. You're so both. It's like that I, Midwestern guilt. It, I tried to make him feel good about it because I said, oh, no, it's okay. We got our steps I just in. filled got... my belly with hot water. You know, this yeah. is what people did in the Great Depression. To feel like they ate, you know. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> like, that made him feel worse. Well, I didn't try to do that. And we're, we're fed. You know, we have cookies, so we're fine. We're yeah. on sugar and we're looking at our phones on Discord, well, having fun time. And then, we're just relaxed and hung out, and Russ is sitting there, just like, guys, I'm pretty hungry. Yeah, can we yeah. go find food? Food now? Because I was kind of losing steam. I don't yeah. lose steam often, yeah. but I was losing steam. Well, especially after hiking all the way through there. The yeah. problem was, was that to get food, we had to hike all the way back. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then we <laughs> there was one food vendor go back. in the hallway with hot food. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The rest of it was like cold sandwiches, which bread, you know, yeah. like some bizarre options. Too. Yeah. yeah. Weird so, stuff. Yeah, so I got a hot dog, and I just had to pull the meat out of yeah. it, you know, and then I had a lentil soup. But it was, like, it was like 30-ish minutes there, 30-ish minutes back, and then waiting 15 or 20 minutes to get a hot dog. And right. I, I'm sitting there eating my potato chips on the floor, watching you wait for your hot dog going, God damn, I feel so fucking yeah, bad right now. I am such an asshole. Yeah, I've endured <laughs> so much worse. It was so funny. And, was so and, funny. and to top it off, I did Russ, I, I did Russ dirty today. Oh, Where, can I tell this? Yeah, story? you tell. Let me story. tell this. What? Yeah. So we 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 had a late start today, but we got out and we were gonna get lunch, but it was like two o'clock by the time we actually were eating lunch, and uh, we found like this Middle Eastern like shawarma kind of place, and so they had like shawarma bowls. Great, you know. Bought everything, bought a water, and then he got a bowl and got uh, orange juice. And so I'm eating or whatever, and I finish early because oh, you, know, you, yeah. so, you were so thirsty. I used to be in the military, right? So I'm I eat fast, right? And so he's still kind of eating. And I, I take a drink of my water. I put the it $8 down. $8 water. Yeah, yeah. And so I put my water down. And then I like, I, my bowl's done. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to go walk across here and throw it away. I'll be right back, right? And I think he felt bad. He's like, oh, I don't want to make Russ wait. And so he's like scarfing all his food down. And I see him like hustling to kind of catch up with me and just chugging on his drink, right? But it's a water. <laughs> Yeah, and he had orange juice, right? Yeah, and so he had just been drinking, like well, chugging my water, water yeah. right? getting my COVID all. <laughs> and over I'm you. like, that's my water, right? And he's got orange juice sitting over there. Yeah, he goes, hey, do you want the rest of it? I'm like, no. And he's like, do you want the rest of my orange juice? I'm like, no. So I just drink both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's whatever you want. You know, it's like that time I pulled the Vita skin off Jay Lash's beautiful Vita, yeah. uh, the plastic protector. Ugh. Yeah, Sometimes they do stupid things. Yeah, it's all good. It Russ, funny. what did you do this week that was a mistake? I don't know. Do you make I'm to think. You don't make mistakes, really. Make mistakes? I, I mean, I you. agreed to come here with you guys. Oh, oh, oh no, no, shit. Bastard, um, bastard. No, I don't know. I, I can't think of I anything think really dumb. You're he's, like the, he's you're the like level-headed one. You're the level-headed you know? wise one of the I'm group. the guy who like has to keep the schedule, so I'm always bugging right. these guys. Okay, what, what did next? you get to order yeah. the Uber? Like, what, what car is right. it? You I know, think what I, it coming? I think my role was like we kind of the negotiator and, and like the compass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, keep, really I, keep, good sense I keep the spark alive <laughs> of fun. Yeah, yeah. I keep yeah. the randomosity alive. Yeah. You, know? yeah, yeah. you, you and, provided a lot of the joy. The joy. Because I would turn around and go, where the fuck is he? I gave yeah. you guys a lot of... Um... And at one point, you disappeared, and then he and I were trying to find you, and you were just sitting in a chair watching us, right. screwing with us. That's why <laughs> He was increase, like, getting increasingly mad, right? He was just like, I was getting so where mad. is he? <laughs> Because he had disappeared like seven <laughs> times that day already. Yeah, I was sitting in this chair across the way, just slowly sipping on my drink, <laughs> looking at you both like, well, when are well, they Actually, that was my me? drink, I think, at that point. <laughs> <but whatever. laughs> oh, no. Okay, so you found me. I gave you guys a bunch of uh, like discourse on various subjects that I find entertaining for myself. And it was mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, the evolution of dubstep and why it should return. Oh, you know, my I, gosh. That was fun. You both had to that absorb. Was, that was fun for you. Every time we were locked in an Uber together, I took yeah. it as an opportunity to force just ramble to force my subjects upon them. Like, have you thought about have you have you thought about the singularity? Right. You know. Or or it was us proselytizing retro gaming to the driver. You oh, know? that's right. You're yeah. free, or telling telling it, hey, do you 
Yeah, do you like old, we, old games? Yeah, like, we had an Uber driver today, and he had a Mario shirt on. Yeah. So I was like, hey, man, uh, I couldn't help but notice your Mario shirt. You know what I'm asking? <laughs> Yo, stuff. Duh. And he's like, never like tried emulation and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Like, very casual kind of fan of Mario. And so we just kind of, yeah. yeah, we steamrolled him. Right, basically. yeah. We steam decked him. Yeah. Steam decked him. <laughs> right. We, we made sure that he was going to get like a Miu Mini tattoo on his neck by the end of it. I right. mean, just, just full on yeah. all the information we could give him. You know? Yeah, one guy bought a Shergy power bank after I showed him that yeah. ridiculous yeah. thing. He's like, what the heck? What is this yeah. thing? I was like, yeah, there you go. Uh, Miu Mini. Many people took interest in Miu Mini. Yeah. Oh, we, yeah. We met, like, a random, we met a random pair that was just sitting outside the bathroom while one of us was using it. And we got talking to them. We talked about retro handles. They had no idea what they're talking about. But then we started talking about old games. And the guy goes, oh, man, the sound. He, they, these are music people. And he's like, the soundtrack for one of those old Game Boy games. It was mm-hmm. a Castlevania game. He thinks, I think oh, it was called Belmont's yeah. Revenge. And as he's talking, I pull out my Mew Mini. Get I Belmont's navigate Revenge. on Onion OS to Castlevania 2 Belmont's Revenge. Yeah. Turn up the volume wheel. And then it's like, you mean this? <laughs> and he's just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> on demand that was, that was he's pretty like, awesome he's like how much does this cost yeah that's crazy and I said you can't buy it unless you you really, the two minute window yeah again, unless you're unfortunately. really dedicated yeah. so, let's see uh, one, one of my favorite moments was that world class meal we had Oh yeah, that, that was, was fantastic. Incredible. Momofuku yeah. from Momofuku, David uh, Chang. David Chang, yeah, Chang, yeah. yeah. With, with the wagyu tomahawk. Yeah, you said surprise the, us. Yeah, we we told the waiter surprise. Get whatever you want. That Ooh. was the right call. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. We walked in and we just said, That's hey, uh, you know, there's so many good things here. What if we just tell you how much we're willing to spend, and then you make the menu, right? And so we told him a price number, and he said okay, and he's, and he's like, do you want us to tell you about the next dish that's coming out? Like, no, nope. nope. just and bring so, it. Uh, yeah, he just kept bringing it and honestly he slid in some free stuff so like yeah. our desserts weren't charged and he gave us like a digestive you know like a, a drink for afterwards mm-hmm. um rose water tasty. liqueur of some yeah yeah and then he takes yeah, us good. into the vip room he's like guys just so you know <laughs> yeah if you pay four thousand dollars you can do whatever you want back here and the cameras are turned off no there's no, <laughs> there's cam- no camera that's the only room the in the only building room with no yeah cameras. yeah and we're like not sure how to take like, that. that. Okay, is, we're we're gonna go now. Yeah, this is probably we are not on that socioeconomic yeah, level. Yeah, Thank yeah, you, though. This is probably we're not, where you, you'd want to take the handy. We're so, not degenerates. Uh, uh, we, we, in general, we've had a fun trip, and my favorite part of the trip, honestly, is hanging here in the Airbnb with you guys. Yeah, yeah, it's you know, good. we've had a lot of fun. Some Just good yeah. talk, some good drinking, life drinking talks. beers until two a.m. and yeah, right. I've Just been editing really videos to while while I'm like yeah, chatting with these guys. I got to see Russ's secret sauce behind the scenes. How does RGC happen? You get to live uh, dialogue me and how to do emu deck today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I did great. like a full like over the shoulder tutorial. Yeah. Like everyone always wants that from. You should us. pay like, him hey, for that. That yeah, was exactly. a lot of. That was, that was the most fun. Yeah, <laughs> where he's guiding me through from his video, but in person, like doing. It was almost like you're playing a cover song of your own. Yeah, episode. I even turned on like my RGC voice and like, yeah, yeah. said, uh, <laughs> "Yeah, man, I want to do it." You yeah. know, it was so good. Uh, which well, you posted this video in our Patreon chat. So subscribe for the little one dollar. A month. It's or seven. Russ's chat it's seven $3. seconds long. Yeah, yeah. It's seven, seven seconds. seconds long. Got to shill a little bit. Um, no. all the time. Yeah. So yeah, it's been it's been fun, guys. And now yeah. we're wrapping up CES. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're about to fly home. Right. And we're gonna continue to hang out, do podcasts, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But we'll be we're you know remote again with the audio latency back. I'm yeah. I'm personally really excited though. Yeah. To get all of this content out. Yeah, we we filmed so much content. so much stuff. I think we have content for maybe 10 videos. Maybe. If not, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. We did so many interviews. We did not just interviews, but active reviews as well for right. several a devices. Lot of impressions videos. Yeah. Game search stuff. Right. Game search um, stuff, which was a, another great interview, by the way. That you was know? a lot of fun. Yeah. I feel like there's other things that we saw that we're not talking about. We just... There was it's so, so much. much CS. Yeah, you, you have to leave them in suspense. Right, the yeah. videos come out. Right, I think. right. It's, see. Yeah. it's impossible to explain the magnitude of this organization. Yeah. It's right. hundred hundred thousand people came to yes. this. Right. Yeah, which is impressive for still being kind of in COVID times. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. but we're we're gonna go next year because I had a blast. I didn't know how much fun I have. I was kind of hesitant, as well, I've been saying in the last few months. We got invited to Taiwan too. That's, oh, that's right. The the Taiwan Computex, CES, Taipei. Computex, yeah. Right. We might do that. Uh, B Haptics wants us to come uh, check out some more of their stuff. Yeah. So we'll just be. We've got more stuff in store for sure. More stuff in store. Man. You guys, I'm so glad we got to do this. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. 
Let's should we, should we just do a group hug on camera? Group hug? I think that's what everyone wants to kind of... I think they want to see a Russ sandwich. Yeah, they want to see a Russ sandwich. We're going to sandwich. <laughs> Guys. This is so creepy. This is so <laughs> weird, right. but here, here we go. There it is. Okay. All right. Yeah. I was going to be more intimate with it, but you know, Pete, this is a family show. Yeah. Um, Since when? True. <laughs> family. My favorite part of this Airbnb we're staying at in Vegas, which by the way is apparently in the sketchiest neighborhood ever. Uh, so far we haven't been killed, but my favorite right. part is how it's not haunted like my attic at home. Right. So, yeah. no go. Well, you have to go back to that, so. Oh my God. I might just live here. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We've had a blast running around CES for days and days, and uh, we've had a blast making this podcast, too. Yeah, this has been great. Thanks, guys. Take care of each other or else. <laughs>